My main area of research at CIS is school education and I've written on and talked about a wide range of topics within that area including school choice and school funding, teacher training and employment, class size, league tables and literacy. One of my first projects for CIS was an historical compendium of social and economic statistical indicators called State of the Nation. While digging up data for that project, I also came across a lot of statistics showing that boys' educational outcomes were worse than girls and had been getting worse over time. I could find little good analysis of why this might be the case, so that became the subject of my first publication for CIS in 1999, The Puzzle of Boys' Educational Decline. The report really touched a nerve. There was a huge positive response from the media, from teachers, from the general public and from politicians and eventually there was a parliamentary inquiry. My policy work in the early 2000s arguing for school choice and defending non-government schools was controversial at the time. Since then, public funding for non-government schools and increased autonomy for state schools has become more widely accepted. I was also an early and vociferous supporter of public access to school test results, proposing that the results of literacy and numeracy tests be made available to the public and to parents online. Of course, we now have NAPLAN and my school. These are still controversial, but again, less so than the idea of school performance reporting a decade ago. My interest in literacy has been an ongoing thread throughout my time at CIS that began with the research on boys' education. One of the key factors I identified was the change in the way that reading was being taught in the last few decades. In the 1980s, the whole language approach had become dominant and teaching children to read using phonic decoding strategies was largely discarded. This appeared to affect boys more negatively than girls and the gender literacy gap grew throughout the years. The change in reading instruction also had a heavy adverse impact on children from low socioeconomic backgrounds, both boys and girls. It seemed to me that this underpinned many of the persistent problems in education and probably went a long way to explaining why so many children were leaving school illiterate despite massively increased spending on schools and the concerted and well-intentioned efforts of their teachers. It also seemed to me to be a great injustice to deny so many children the opportunity of a better education and a better life when the means to improve the situation was within reach. That is, better teaching guided by real evidence, not social justice theories. This eventually became the basis of my doctoral research, which resulted in the article Why Jaden Can't Read. I'll be continuing to push for better reading instruction in particular we're starting to see policies at the state and at the federal level that reflect these findings. So I'd hate to lose that momentum. But I'm also going to keep arguing for more evidence-based policy and practice in schools in general. Over the next few years, I'll be looking at ways to reduce waste in schools. I can't stand seeing limited education funds wasted on things that don't work. I'll also be continuing to champion policies that facilitate parental choice in schools. I'm not a laissez-faire libertarian. I don't believe that governments have no role in education. All children deserve to be educated to an adequate standard and governments have a responsibility to protect children in that way. But there is a big leap from saying that all children should be educated to saying that all children must be educated in a certain place in a certain way. Parents know their children better than anyone else and the vast majority will make good decisions on their behalf given information and the opportunity. That's my approach in a nutshell.